Okay, hi, uh, hello again. Uh, another unscripted video. Um, I seem to be doing more of these for some reason. Um, I know we didn't hit the goal on this, um, but I figured, you know what? It's free YouTube content. We got 700. It's close enough. Um, so, fuck it. I'll make the video anyways, and I figured it'd be good content. So, as of recording this part of the video, I haven't seen the film yet. Uh, I'm about. I want to record my like my my pre reactions, basically, or my my, my pre thoughts before we get into it. Um, I am going to see it in a couple hours, hopefully, if nothing goes wrong. Uh, currently, my thoughts are: I'm thinking this is probably going to be the worst superhero movie, worst movie I've ever watched in general. Uh, I didn't watch Morbius, um, thankfully. Because I figured, I tried to get through the first 10 minutes of it, and it was fucking boring, and it put me to sleep, even with friends. So, I just, I, I, I dropped it. I did not even bother finishing that film. I could not stand to watch more than 10 minutes. Um, so, my, my, my expectations for Madam Web, very low. <laughs> this is the studio that made Morbius. I am, I was actually same writer as well. I, uh, my expectations are very low, very, very low, but I am, I am excited to see how much I have to shit talk this film. So, without further ado, I will see you all in a couple hours. Okay, so I'm back, and I need this movie in HD just so fucking soon. There's thousands of shots here that I just can look at for hours upon hours and just adore. Every shot is an absolute cinematic masterpiece. If you loved Into the Spider Verse, his art. Oh, fuck. Oh, my bad. I was reading the Across the Spider Verse script. Oh, fuck's sake. God damn it. That's my bad. Um, so, speaking about Madam Web, uh, I'm just going to start off by saying, um, like, I have very uh, complex emotions about this film, but I, I think. The best way to summarize it is it's worse than The Flash. I'm just going to be honest. It's worse than The Fucking Flash. I don't know how that happened. The Flash was a horrible movie, but it had some redeeming qualities. This movie, other than, like, I guess Adam Scott's Ben, has no redeeming qualities. There is not a single quality here that is redeeming, that I liked, that I thought was good enough to be expanded on in a sequel. Starting off... The main villain, whose name is, like, fucking Ezekiel or whatever the hell, I don't know, has- he is horrible at acting, I'm sorry. I don't know if it was the actor himself, or if someone dubbed over his lines or some shit, but that's what it sounds like. He sounds like his lines were dubbed over. The acting is horrible. It is genuinely just so bad. I do not like his acting. Like- for the rest of the cast, the first half of the movie's acting is terrible until, like, the train scene. Isabel, Dakota, and Sydney all drop the ball pretty hard after the train scene. There's some tolerable, toler some tolerable lines, but overall it's pretty bad. Celeste, who plays Maddie, is easily the best part of the main protags, because you could actually tell she was having fun with it, whereas the rest act like they don't want to be there. The villain's motivation feels very stupid and tacked on as a way to connect the main cast to him. The villain as a whole just sucks. He has no memorable lines, no memorable moments in general, and his design is horrible. Already spoken about the acting as well. He also dies, and I'm not joking about this, I'm genuinely so dead serious. He dies due to the letters S and P falling on top of him in the final and only fight in the entire film. Yes, you heard that right. Both of those things right. He dies to let to fucking letters, and that is the only fight in the entire film. <laughs> that is literally the entire fight. The plot as a whole is just very nonsensical and is on the same level as Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, which is like an old Broadway show that got shut down like fucking years ago. Uh, due to like health concerns and just in general the story being bad. It's a whole mess, you can watch documentary documentaries that people have made on it and stuff. Having spider people that live in the forest with magic powers and wear stuff that resembles Peter's costume as a way to try to give that costume a new meaning is just lame as hell, and it feels like they're trying way too hard. Just go back to Oscorp making cool looking spiders that give people powers that's way cooler and far more interesting. Uncle Ben's actor, like I said, Adam Scott, was pretty solid overall, and probably the best part of the film, but that entire plotline just felt like they were scared to commit to it. 
Hell, the movie feels like it's scared to reference Spider-Man in general, despite stealing stuff from his media twice. Peter isn't even referenced in the film. They get close to saying his name, but instead cut it off at last second. There's one moment where they're in the forest after they escape from, um, whatever his name is, the villain, the main villain. Um, and I believe it's, um, Isabel who says it, or, uh, who, well, who plays, uh, Anya in the film. She says something like, oh, what is it, a, a spider person or whatever? Because they're talking about how he can walk on walls and stuff. It feels like I'm just scared to say Spider-Man. The iconic line of, with great power comes great responsibility, which essentially means that if you have the ability to do something, you do that thing. Like Taz and Ben said, not choice, responsibility. Now, the line is, when you take on responsibility, great power will come, which flips the original quote on its head, saying, if you want good things, you should take responsibility. I also have to mention the iconic line of, what, you've never been shot in Queens before? Which is what Cassie says to Ben in their first scene together. Do you get it, guys? It's because he dies. Laugh, please. I've seen a lot of people say this line is funny, but I just don't personally like it. I think it comes off as extremely forced to get the audience to say, Whoa, I get it! And point at the screen like that one soy jack face. Going down the rabbit hole of this movie referencing Spider-Man but not actually showing him is them blatantly stealing from the Raimi films, specifically Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man PS4's main theme because this movie didn't feel like forging its own identity for some reason. Going back to the main cast for the moment, I really have to bring up how Cassie has literally no motivation in this entire film. She has no reason to care for these girls, she has no reason to want to stop the villain, she doesn't even find out who the villain is until the final act. She has literally no reason to be doing any of this, and the first act portrays her as someone who would not do any of this. She just suddenly has a character shift and it's completely out of nowhere. Speaking of stuff that's come out of nowhere and makes no sense, there's this one scene after the baby shower where Cassie has to go help save people from a burning building due to her job as a paramedic. And during this, she has a vision of her, one of her co-workers dying due to being hit by a truck when trying to deliver someone to the hospital. This scene is so weird because it's played off as some major important moment and I couldn't help but laugh. Because, first of all, we have no connection to this random co-worker. This is the only time he appears in the entire film, nor is this moment ever brought up again. On top of that, this is basically meant to be her Uncle Ben moment, I think? Where she could have stopped him from dying, but didn't. But the reason that Uncle Ben moment is so impactful is because we feel Peter's connection to him and how Peter connected to his death. It's Peter's selfishness and pettiness that led that burglar get away, and how it ends up with Ben being shot and killed. It adds a layer of depth to it which gives Peter a reason to grow and change. With this scene, it doesn't have that. Cassie didn't do anything wrong here. I mean, it can be argued she's barely made an effort to change the future, but she still tried. There's nothing she could have done to change what happened. We don't have any of that impact with her co-worker's death either because we don't know him. This is the only time he appears and it's to die. And this moment is never brought up again other than by Ben, like, once. So what's meant to be an important scene for the character just comes off as overly dramatic for the sake of tension. I also find it funny that Cassie has to earn her blindness and immobility. I wish I was joking, but yes, that is indeed a plot point. She doesn't just get them through an accident, she gets them by sacrificing herself to save the girls. Yeah, what a fucking movie, man. Final thing I'm bringing up here is the absurd marketing for this movie. Whether it be putting her on a bottle of ocean spray or Dakota Johnson saying how she can see the future, and she knows we'll love the movie and even see it twice, which I guess she saw an alternate timeline. What I really have to point out is that Sony slapped these fucking renders of the pro tags in their suits all over the marketing. There were These renders were everywhere, and guess what? The suits only appear in the movie for less than a minute. Maddie, Anya, and Julia don't even become spider people in this film. It's the most blatant false advertising I've ever seen. Dakota's suit is even worse because it's only in the film for 10 seconds. They slap these suits everywhere just so people would see the movie. And it didn't even work. This film made $6 million domestically on opening day. That's how bad this is. I think overall, like, no matter what, we're still gonna end up getting these movies. I and mean, we're getting another one this year. We're getting fucking Craven, which no way I'm watching. At least not in cinemas. I'll, I'll pirate that shit, man. I don't care.
I'm just tired of these movies, man. I think they're getting worse and worse, like, with everything they release, and they're even doing worse financially because Sony is losing the trust they once had in people to deliver good movies. Their biggest success was Venom, which made, or well, Venom 1, which made, like, 800-something million. And then after that, it went from uh, Venom 1's 800 million to Venom 2's 500 million to then Morbius's 160 something million. And now it's down to Madam Web making $6 million domestically on her first day. Obviously, Madam Web's box office run hasn't finished yet. But, I mean, come on, I don't think this movie's gonna do very well either way. I think they're just losing trust in consumers, and I think. We need to see them return the rights to Marvel. I really do pray, like, especially with Spider-Man 4 coming out. Spider-Man 4, um, we know that there's some fight going on between Kevin Feige and Tom and Sony, because Kevin Feige and Tom, they want to make uh, Spider-Man 4 a grounded movie, which is a Civil War type movie, basically, kind of, uh, which is really grounded in the streets of New York, whereas Sony wants to bring Toby, Andrew, everyone else back for a multiverse movie, which I don't think anyone wants. So, I mean, I think Sony just has no idea how to handle these characters. I think it's crazy that even after decades of owning them, they just have no way, no idea of what they're doing. The only reason the Raimi movies were any form of good was because of Raimi himself. Avial Rad forced Venom into the film, even though Raimi didn't like Venom and didn't understand Venom as a character, which he himself admitted. Avial Rad forced him into the film either way, and it ended up turning out horribly. I, I say, and I say this as like a, um, as a Spider-Man 3 defender, I like Spider-Man 3 a lot. I would go as far as to say it's my favorite from the Raimi film, it, from the Raimi movies. I, I get the most enjoyment out of this, but, all well, out of that film, but like still, it's objectively the worst of, the worst one. And it's just, I don't know, man, it's just bad. It's, Sony has no clue what they're doing. They will, they will do whatever it takes to get a multiverse, even if it means destroying their own franchise financially. All they care about is making money and getting a multiverse, or a multiverse, a universe, whatever. They're getting what the MCU has, basically. And they could have that with Spider-Verse, but they aren't, but they don't want that. They want live action, because live action objectively does better than animation. Which I think is sad. I think that's really sad, but I don't know what else we can really do about it. With that said, um, do not do not watch Madam Web. Don't watch any of Sony's upcoming movies. Even if it's as a joke, don't praise it. Because I think, like shown with Morbius, if Sony can't take a joke, then they will really, <laughs> then they really release Morbius and it does terribly. But then it also means we get more slop because Sony thinks we like this stuff. So just don't, don't praise this, critique Sony, call them out, do whatever, use your voice for something actually worth it. Don't make these lame-ass jokes and throw them all over the place. Don't give these movies your time of day. Move on, watch something better, watch Across the Spider-Verse, support Spider-Verse in general. And do whatever you can to not support these films, because this is horrible, and I don't think we should be getting these. Especially when you consider that... There's a good chance we may not even get, like, another Madame Web or a, you know, a Craven the Hunter solo movie. These are our only chances for a long, long time at getting accurate adaptations of our favorite characters. And I want these movies to be good because I want them to be accurate. <laughs> I want them to be faithful adaptations. I want them to be worth watching. Even if they aren't faithful, I at least want them to be well written. I want them to be well done. I just want good movies, man. <laughs> That's all I want. Uh, and I think, no matter what, the way Sony is continuing right now, we aren't going to get good movies. So, again, like I said, call them out, make your voices heard that we don't want these movies, and I'll see you all next time.